so we had this discussion before because I thought about maybe hiring people from Ukraine too. But literally, it became so expensive to hire people out of Ukraine. It, it was literally the same thing as hiring people here. It, like, I remember even when I flew to Ukraine before the war started, the dispatchers were making what the dispatchers were making here. It like does, didn't make any sense. So, David, first of all, thanks for coming on to the podcast. It's actually a pleasure to have you on. You know, I feel like a lot of Slavic people maybe look up to you, you know, so it's kind of cool to have you on on a podcast. And we just kind of, uh, if you want to introduce yourself and kind of explain what you do and what you guys do with Migway, I know you're the founder of Migway, but if you want to go into a little bit deep details, talk about yourself a little bit. Yeah. Um, David Ronan, I'm, I guess, the founder and the owner of Migway, uh, or Migway owns me. I don't know. It, Depends how you look at it. You know, uh, started a company in 2012. Um, I I don't know. I mean, I'm Ukrainian. People know me in the Slavic community. Bob isn't my next door neighbor. Yeah, basically, yeah. We're pretty close yeah. by, so that's pretty You're both cool. Charlotte, right? Both to Charlotte, yeah. yeah. Okay. Bob, I, I mean, your relatives in some way, shape, or form? Or no. <laughs> Probably, honestly, like our great grandparents or something. Maybe we're all related yeah, somehow. I'm sure they're, hey, I'm sure they're friends, yeah. David, we're all related to Christ anyway, so you know that's, well, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, but yeah. we are like neighbors here, though. We're literally like two blocks away from you guys. Our offices, really, you know, like oh, wow. yeah, two or three blocks. Yeah, so we're pretty close oh, that's by. Cool. Nice. Is yeah. there a large Ukrainian uh, every time? Every population. Every time I. Every time I drive by their warehouse, I'm like, hmm, this is what I gotta aim for, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's, it's like a goal, you know, that I say exactly. So, yeah. so Bob, you know, if you really want to aim for that, you should know the truth. And if you want to know the truth, I need to show you my book. So once you see the the debt weight of it, you know, you might reconsider, you know. Uh oh I I see <laughs> I see the books on my side and I can only imagine where your books are. You can just, go, just you know? multiply it and you'll you'll be pretty close, you know. Exactly, yeah. So there is a That's saying crazy. that when you make a million bucks start to start with two, you know. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like what what inspired you guys to or what inspired you to open Migway in the trucking company? Like what what did, did you have some kind of like before? Because I don't really know your your like background, but was your dad in it or like your grandparents? Yeah, or you just kind of so, like um, hey I uh you know from Rochester, New York, just like you. And uh through yeah. my high school career, I worked for Kier. Uh Andre, me and Andre were friends. And I just helped them out, just working on the forklift, kind of pretty much packing trucks to California. And uh -huh. and I told myself, when I grow up, one thing I don't want to do is trucking. That was a very definite answer. You know, like, this is not what I yeah. wanted. I've seen the stress. I've seen those, you know, almost no life in it. So I actually started a construction company when I was, um, I want to say, 18, 19. And then what? Okay, it went well. I was making good money for, for my age. And uh, in 2010, I started dating my wife that I, my wife today uh -huh. and uh um, and uh i don't know how it happened but pretty much when i proposed to her she said like i don't care for the money and i know you'll figure that out but um this whole construction gig is not going to work because i had to travel i was doing commercial uh mill work commercial like you wouldn't know what can when you walk in a hotel you'd see any everything that's made out of wood all the paneling all the trim work all that that's that was my business that's what i did oh, okay I enjoyed it. you know when i was in first grade when the teacher asked me who you want to be when you grow up as a carpenter and I was pursuing my dreams. I genuinely loved, you know, the idea of, you know, finished woodwork, but uh, she's like, we can't, you know, this is 2011, I believe, you know, I proposed her. this is 2011. She's like, you really can't travel. Like we have to figure something else out. And uh, I remember I was like, well, man, I, I don't know. I, I mean, what else, what, what else do I know? So I called uh, my uncle and he was working for a company in, um, in New York, and I called him. I said, Vaska, I called him. I'm like, Listen, uh, I think I'm going to start a trucking company while I still have some money left from construction. You know, he's like, Bad idea, but I can't tell you what you can, I cannot do. So I was like, Well, yeah. can I, can you train me? He's like, um, Sure, the dispatcher that we have here is going to Ukraine for a month. If you want to come work with me and check it out, you know, see if you like it. Well, when I went over there, my training consisted of pulling trailers up to a dock back and forth. You know, I wasn't really getting my training. <laughs> the only thing I learned yeah. was to pick up a phone and say dispatch, you know, like that was, and, and click, you remember all DOT, you'd have to click on everything to 
so they're not highlighted all the all the boards. You remember? I don't. The, I don't the, remember because I never really used to dispatch back then. Back then, I used to be just uh, a driver. I literally started dispatching when I moved to Charlotte about three years well, ago. All so boards, yeah. it was something you downloaded to your, to your computer, and every every load when it would pop up, you have to click on it to make sure that you it gets highlighted. You click on it, you know it's clicked. It's, oh. you know. So I would just sit there and click and. We would always make fun of, oh, we're just clicking away and there's nothing really happening. So then I booked my first load and he's like, well, you think it's a good load? And I'm like, yeah, it's a load full of bathtubs. You know, it's going to be light. We can double stack this stuff and, and pack it, you know? He's like, all right, book it. We booked the load and it turns out to be the bat, uh, the bathtubs with the whole stand-up thing, you know? I mean, oh, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was my, uh, that was my first and last load I booked for them. <laughs> and that, that my training was over, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I got back. I got back. I still had something going on locally here. I used to. I was a contractor for Lowe's, you know, the hardware store. Uh huh. And I bought two semis, and I uh, I leased them to a company here. Um, and then we went on our honeymoon, and uh, I come back, and the guy hands me a check for ninety nine dollars for two week two weeks worth of worth of running, and he's like, "What's that?" He's like, "This Jeez. is your gross." He's like, "This is your gross gross profit." I'm like. All right, there's got to be a mistake. He's like, no, 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 no. This is this is pretty much it. I'm like, well, yeah. I was like, you need to understand. I can't even buy a tire with this or a recap. Like, this is just not gonna work, you know. So he's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. That's that's how it is. So I was like, how about this? I keep paying your percentage. Let me just come in. Let me load my own trucks. It's your company. You run it. Your signs. You had, I think at that time he had like eight trucks. I'm like, two of them, two of them were mine. I'm like, let me just uh -huh. load it myself. Uh, but at the end of the week, the most profitable trucks in the company were mine, and I was like, I'm out. Oh wow. Yeah, so that's when I <laughs> starting my own thing, huh? Yeah, that's when I understood that um, I had to do something, and I started a company, and here we are. I mean, that's that's it. You know, that's that's pretty much. Yeah. That was the start. What what year is that? So can you tell? Oh God. Uh, two thousand and twelve was when Megway was You're born. Um, okay. I had a little. The reason Megway really was at the end. Of, it was in November two thousand eleven. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but I went in partners with somebody and I got completely railed, screwed, shut down. So I had to go and restart really quick under my own name and everything in 2012. Beginning at sometime in 2000, I don't remember which month it was, but I know it was 2012 because we just did our 10 year anniversary. Uh, and that's oh, when wow. I got an apartment, worked out of my apartment. I did all the interviews in the lobby of the of the clubhouse and the apartment by the pool and mm -hmm. And the trucks would park by the street, by my balcony, you know, so that's. Oh, well, that's kind of what we're doing here now because we don't have really truck parking here. It's pretty tough to find truck parking. I, literally, I saw on Instagram, like, it reminded me of myself, yeah. Yeah, we're literally parking, like, on the side of the office and, like, I feel like my, my neighbors are getting pissed, you know, and, like, the people, but it is what it is. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, you have to do what you got to do, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's that was pretty much the start of it, and, um you know, and I really wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing the Slavic thing, you know, everybody's packing, you know, yeah, I don't want to get into, I don't know how much I can say here, but you know, modifying the locks and the trailers and all this other crap and stuff, you know, everybody knows, yeah, everybody knows the drill, yeah. I mean, you know, and I was like, well, there's got to be a way how to do this. And my, my first discovery, and, and I'm going to stop with this thing because everybody, everybody already understands this, but back in the day, this was news. It was called the triangle. Or instead of you going up, making money and doing a backhaul, you make money, make money, and then you lose money once. That was like yeah. the biggest, that was like the biggest epiphany, right? So we started studying the market, figuring out, you know, which areas, how we can, what what do these triangles look like, and just start starting twisting this triangle all over the map and and picking up trends, studying it. And in early days, I right away, thanks to my wife, she was really good with Excel. She started collecting data and absolutely everything since day one of the company. So now um you know when we decided to grow five years ago it was very easy for me to grow because i could literally predict of what i need if i get to this amount of trucks i knew exactly this features of mine like i had all the data because i had five years of data and i could take those five years of data and predict if i i could do very very detailed projections all right if i do this that's what this will look like if i do this this is what it will look like yeah and that's it i mean five years ago i started growing the company and we grew 10 times since. It's uh, oh, wow. pretty fascinating because uh, data is so important. And typically, like a lot of like business owners like me, like kind of take that for granted. And I, I think you have a lot to be grateful to your wife because your wife seems to have is like the, the mathematical kind of like the person 
I'm not like that. I know I talked to Bob. Bob doesn't seem like he's he's like that. I don't. I'm not. I'm not like that. If <laughs> so, it wasn't for like my office people, oh man, that would yeah, be yeah. so bad. It would be a disaster. Yeah. But it, it's 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 amazing to have one person that's kind of like a visionary and one person that's kind of like mathematical, uh, like grounded on the ground, and one's kind of like in the sky. Like it wasn't. Dreamy. It wasn't as much as mathematical. She's very. She's her math is better than mine. There's there's no doubt. Sure. But it wasn't as much as mathematical as much as uh, being able to uh, give me all the data. And then I started thinking, like, all right, how can we connect? I guess I'm good at seeing trends. I'm like, all right, what if we do this? What if we do this? And whatever was in my head, she was able to do that in Excel super fast. So if I saw it, it's like, no, this is not what I'm at. She would be, you know, like, you know, it was a very, very easy process for us to do those projections. You know, like back in the day, five years ago, projection was like a big word. Like, you know, this is <laughs> business school, you know, like. Especially, then, especially in our Slavic community, you know, oh, I yeah. feel like nobody would even think about that. That's that that didn't even exist in their no, it heads. Didn't exist. To be yeah, everybody in our Slavs, you know, how can I make more? Yeah, I don't, I don't even want to go week into only that. Only and we'll figure yeah. next week. Yeah. You know, there was never, yeah. there was never strategy. There was never any of that stuff. You know, and that's you know, everybody wants to know what is the success. I mean, Bob is like, okay, I want to be like you, and what makes it successful? I'm like, I just work harder than you. You know, he just laughed. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know? but that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes. it's a, literally a 24-hour job yeah you gotta be always in it always on it it's it's insane yeah but that's crazy that you talked about that triangle because i just heard about that triangle like kind of how to do that triangle right. you know because like, a lot of people will only pick one lane and run this yeah. lane you know but like no, 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 actually no, no, no. i think i think our safety person told us this or the natalia that came or somebody said she like try to figure out a triangle people have a triangle and i was like what are you kind of talking about? And then I kind of, you know, yeah. like pictured it. But that's a definitely a good idea. Are you guys still implementing that triangle? Because now you guys are so big, right? What are you guys up to right now? Like, are you still doing that? Because I feel like when you get so big, you can't really even so, plan uh, that out like that. In the past six months, you can take all your triangles and all that stuff and throw it out the window. It doesn't matter. The name yeah. of the game is move the trucks, don't lose money, and and get get everybody paid. But um, I don't know if you know about two years ago, I started an IT startup overseas in Ukraine. And we were supposed to launch the product uh -huh. uh, a month ago. We're still a little bit behind with the beta testing. We're very, very close. And pretty much we're able to implement AI to help us do it on a much bigger scale. Same triangle. Oh, wow. Yeah, just oh, okay. run run thousand scenarios really, really fast. And being able to, you know how FreightWaves does it? Uh, kind of they can tell yeah. you it never works. We tried it so many times and it just it's they keep they keep saying it works, but we 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 tried for, we had it for a year and a half and you talking about sonar? Like what they yeah, sonar, what yeah, they yeah, predict. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and it never works. So we just decided to kind of stick to our own what we know. And uh it's it's not that hard. I mean it's the same it's the same idea with what they're doing, but being able to uh guesstimate guesstimate potential area where the leverage is going to be on your side that's really what this is about and not over like drugs guess to me as in like okay what's the market going to do next week or next month or like no, 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 no. guess to me one day in advance you oh, cannot okay. go you cannot go you cannot guess you cannot guess to me i mean it would be a complete gamble if you do it one week i mean there's ways where you can pull data from a bunch of tmss and see how many orders showed up let's say in chicago area and how many trucks are going to be there tomorrow and then you can mm -hmm. do a quick math to see, okay, where is where is the ratio going to be? I'm just kind of, you know, yeah, that's so, really, um, you know, David, you have like 300 trucks, right? Or, or no, 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 two sixty, oh. and we just, I just bought five, I just bought five more today, like an hour ago. Oh wow, nice. Mm -hmm. um, are you dealing with most of the spot market? Like that's how you're covering your loads? Or are you, uh, you know, like contract like rate? Um, um, yes and no. Uh, let me explain it because. I was asked, David, why don't you go fully contract? And again, having all the data, I went back and I pulled up just quick math. You take DAT numbers for the past five years or past 10 years, and you can see, right, 20, 19, 18, what was the average rate for a van, right? And what I noticed yeah. is me, me doing my triangle and me just hustling, we we're able to beat DAT rates by 20, 30% consistently year over year. You know, maybe month to month when it fluctuates, we'd have to adjust. But year over year, we're always able to beat DAT rates by 20, 30%. So I was like, okay, it makes no sense for me to uh, go all contract rate because it just makes no sense. So we found this approach. We are spot rates for our customers. What we did during the hot season is I went heavily, I went heavily into customers, but not in the sense of bidding on RFPs, just having a relationship with them. So whenever they have overflow, they would call us. Does okay. that make sense? Like. Mm -hmm. We didn't yeah. go in there committing to volumes. 
we went in there being a backup for them. Like, hey, listen, when you guys can cover, call us, but you pay our rate. And that was the process. I mean, I remember at the peak, we at 21, we had right at 200 trucks on the road. And we were, I was bragging to one of my buddies that that week we had 200 trucks on the road. And that week we only booked two loads out of a load board. You know, wow. so that's how yeah. happy we were all customers and stuff, you know. And yeah. believe it or not, that gamble is what's carrying us through right now. Because I don't know what I would do if I was 100% load board. Yeah. I mean, I know what I would do. I'd be selling trucks left and right. That's what I would be doing because right. I would not be able to. I would not be able to move them. No way. So right now, what kind of mm -hmm. like percent of loads are from customers, and what percent do you take from uh, DT? Give or take. Um, I want to say fifty fifty. Okay. I want to say fifty fifty. I want to say the so when, Go ahead. Yeah. So when I you're thought, saying like contracted freight, where where you didn't really like, why not to go fully like that? Because DT, you could always book a little bit more, right? Because when you're in contract, then you're kind of stuck to that. You can't really go up, right? So like when it does twist a little bit more, you can make more profit just booking on dt doing spot freight right so it's think of, we were treating customers like spot rate so customers would call us when they couldn't move the load so mm -hmm. we were pretty okay. much taking we were taking the profit that the broker would take all to ourselves mm -hmm. you know what i mean kind of cutting out you know that that was the idea but like but then this at the same time bob here's what i noticed that uh you cannot effectively or efficiently cover more than 100 trucks off a load board that's a gamble that's a that's a fact at least what we see you know if you take north mm -hmm. carolina you put it 150 mile radius. Um, you cannot run a trucking company uh, of of 100 trucks or more 100 percent off a load board. It just, I mean, you could, but you're not going to be making money. You know, you, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Like, we found the balance where anything over 100 trucks has to be dedicated to customers, and that's kind of the transition we're doing now. Is okay. Right, we understand that. We understand that, and that's kind of the reason we're struggling because we're over the number. Plus, the, there's no freight right now. I mean, everybody knows that. Um, yeah. But even regardless of the freight comes back around, you know, it's pretty much just like hedging a hedging a stock market. You know, yeah. you you have your you have your value growth stocks and then you have your whatever. So I guess I guess our value stocks would be customers and our growth stocks would be uh spot market because we're always been able to beat the customers, but we're not gonna have exposure of more than hundred trucks to the to the spot market. That's what we come that's up smart. with. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely smart. I'm curious, like, um, David, how did you get in with, like, these shippers? Because you have 260 trucks, and, you know, when you tell a shipper you have 260 trucks, you know, their eyes are glowing. They're like, they want to learn more. They definitely want to work with you. Because uh, they typically don't want to work with small carriers because uh, mm -hmm. they can't handle a lot of their business. So mm -hmm. how was your, like, strategy to getting with these shippers? Like, uh, was it really simple, easy, where you just, like, went around the Charlotte area and, like, just talked to, like, so, those warehouses? So, again, I, I, used the, I used the momentum advantage. When we were making... You know, uh, I call them when we were printing money. I mean, we were, uh, I don't know how, how, how I mean, I mean, our, our margin, our, I mean, our net margin for last year and the years before it was over 40%. I mean, we were wow. just, it was insane, you know? Yeah. Uh, and we, what, what I did is seven, Sorry. Was it, which uh, year was it? No, 21. Uh, 21. 20, no, no, 20, yeah. uh, 21. Got it. Sure, sure. Uh, and, and before that, you know, uh, so 19. Mm -hmm. 19 was started out bad, no, started out good. First quarter was good. Second quarter was trash. Third, fourth quarter, we made everything up. And then 21 was just, was just a flying year. But anyways, all that, all the profit, because we were growing so fast, I invested back in the company and a, and a lot of what I invested, I think we we're putting in, I don't know if we should drop numbers. I think we we're spending about $1.5 million into marketing. And that included, oh, wow. and that included, um, I know, you know, Bobby probably just see the, advertisements for drivers that's just because your phone cookies you know i tried yeah. to we we really went out there and um spoke the truth of who we are as a company and our values and what we're trying to be like that yeah. one that started being you know like to me um paul i don't know your your background but you know um or religious background but to me i wanted to do something more than more than just make money and i was like and we came up with this motto to build a great company and rich lives of our employees right so what we did is we actually hired we have a chaplain that works for us that drivers can call him 24 7. i mean he he will visit your family at home if they need help i mean we really oh. went into building a company where people's lives would change and what yeah. prompted me to that is because i was sitting one time and i was like it was one of those good days where you know you feel like you're making money and you feel so empty 
And then a driver came in and just said, thank you so much for improving my life. Thanks for giving me a proper advice and a good compass. And I was like, hold on a second. I think this is worth living for. This is worth, this is worth more than money. And we just really put that focus on, on improving the lives of everybody that works for Midway. Like that was a conscious decision. And, and I think when you, when you put something above money, I think everything else just starts to go to a different level. And the customers felt that the marketing felt that the people that have uh, communicated with us, uh, that was, uh, I think, I think that was, I think that was a huge part of our success, you know, because we had a situation, uh, we had a situation and I made notes to make sure I say this, we had a situation, Bob, this is something you could use uh, where this is 2021. Everybody obviously wants our trucks. Dispatchers are, getting paid off by brokers just to just to just for them just for us to take their load you know we had yeah. a situation where there was a broker that called us he called one of the, the dispatchers no longer with us but he called us and says please take my load and he gave him our rate he's like all right i'm willing to pay you your rate which was uh, 500 above the market at that time but he's like but I, I know you can i know you can do it well guess what um uh we didn't do the load because we had other customers that we committed to and this other dispatcher was trying to sneak one in and take care of his customers because it would make his numbers look good you know we didn't do a load we did it the following day we delivered it late and he was very upset with these like guys i paid you a midway rate like wtf and what i did is i made an example out of him i took 500 bucks out of the pot we have a pot that everybody shares all the dispatchers and i paid uh -huh. the broker but i said you paid a midway rate you didn't get the midway service here's your money back I oh. sent a loud message that, hey, we are going to, that we don't treat brokers like brokers, we treat them like customers. And if the broker is not, doesn't appreciate our treatment, we don't work with them. We just block him. So TKL was the first one to go, you know? Oh, no way. <laughs> wow. yeah. That's what I was good. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you guys, do you, so you don't work with TKL at all? I don't really? think, I don't oh, even wow. think, I don't even think we used to work with them now. Well, good for you. That. But do you see what's on my wall right here? <laughs> 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 yeah. Those are, um, what is funny. it called? Like, you know how people give you medals, but those are my uh, medals. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> my cease and desist so letters. Yeah. So, you, yeah. You, yeah. so Bob got in trouble with TQL. I got in trouble with Landstar. And Landstar actually deleted my Instagram account for three weeks, like two years ago. So it's oh, funny wow. how like, yeah, there's, they're, they're loaded yeah. up and they go after social media accounts and make fun yeah. of them. No, it was, it was all about like, hey, we're, we're going to set this standard of morality. And yeah. we're not only work with people that appreciate the center of morality. And all of a sudden, even now, like, dude, like, even now, like, yesterday, we got a load to New Jersey. And I know this seems like crazy numbers. And I got a load to New Jersey or PA for $2,300 just because, I mean, they can cover the load for 17 all day long. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the customer and the carrier will be happy. You just give it to no, it, it definitely way. matters the relationship you have. Like, I literally, um, maybe you saw I posted on my Instagram. I had a good communication with a, a broker, and he gave me that load literally to Atlanta, Georgia for like 1800 bucks. You know, he's yeah. like, Hey, yeah, you yeah, reached out that. to yeah. me first. You literally reached out. He's like, You're my first one in line. And literally, just that was, Patrick. That was 200, 200, 200. Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, yep. I know Patrick. 200 yeah, mile yeah. Home, so, cool. you know, Patrick? Oh, yeah. 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 He's been following me for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah relationships so. are everything. I think that does matter. And, yeah, and that's what I was gonna ask. So, like, how much is it, or how much is it? Is it just customers, or like, how much is it? Do you like build the relationship with the specific broker? Do you guys work with like a specific broker? Like, hey, send me all, all the freight that you guys have. Yeah, this, we this work. Lane. With, so, yeah. arrive. I know broker wise, arrive is probably the biggest broker. If you look by revenue, arrive is the biggest broker. But um, I remember I was reading forums when I just started my company. I was still in my apartment, and somebody said, "Listen." If you lower your rates, brokers will never let you raise them back up. They'll just know you that this is the carrier at two dollars a mile. This is the carrier. And they'll yep. just go down the list. That's literally what somebody tells me all the time. That's freaking in our office. He's like, as soon they will literally give it to somebody else because they know you ran that for them cheaper. Yep. Now they're not gonna raise it. Yep, that's mad crazy. That's literally that's insane. Crazy. Yeah. So you have yeah. to keep that in mind. Just, just. I mean, that's that's. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's just how. I guess that's the business of it. That's the nature of it. You know, like you just have yeah. to keep in mind. The you know, you just know your worth, I guess. Yeah. And again, it always helps to have we so many trailers. I mean, we buy. I don't know. We buy. I know we buy a hundred trucks every year, or we we have in the past two years. So we buy about one hundred fifty trailers. You know, and this year I know we have probably another hundred trailers coming, and it just seems like to be never be enough. 
So yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. that that's a, another thing I've noticed is a lot of brokers want like these pools pools of trailers. They're like, hey, can you drop a trailer? Can you do this? It's becoming yeah. a very very big it's, thing it's to differentiate themselves in the market because there's like twenty five thousand brokers, and if you could differentiate stuff, if you could bring trailer pools in. It like welcomes or it helps you get a customer and a shipper and like build that relationship with them. So I visited Freightvana in Phoenix a couple of days ago. I'm not sure. Do you guys work with Freightvana? Have you heard of Freightvana before? I haven't heard of it so long. I don't know. They're relatively new. So they came on the market around two years ago and they actually have uh, venture capital. So they, they have investors. So okay. they bought in the last year a thousand trailers and they're only oh, wow. brokerage. They have no trucks. They have a thousand trailers and they do like, so they're able power to. Only. Like, uh, yeah, power only. So they, they literally. All these big shippers are asking for it because, first of all, inventory is high, so like it, it allows you to store, you know, in the trailer, gives more room, and then you can literally, like, if you have trailers, it's so much, I don't know, like more legitimate of an operation than oh, I'm just a broker, I'm going to use my computer. It's like no, I actually have a trailer. We could drop it at your, you know, your facility. You could you could have it for a month, and then you know you could tell us to pick it up or something. So having trailers is a huge differentiator for brokers to get in with shippers, uh, especially in this market right now. Yeah. In this market, doesn't matter what you have. You just you're. <laughs> it's like yeah, like this market. Ask how much money you? Uh, what's your profit margin? I say, what's that? You know. <laughs> yeah, you're still making a profit margin. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's literally like, what it is. Like yeah. somebody told me. Somebody told me this recently. I was talking to them. They're like, "Oh, we made this much money." I'm like, "Wait, you still made money? That's good for you." You know. <laughs> yeah, we we start yeah. using we start using this term. Uh, it's called um, uh, how do I, term managing your losses you know <laughs> yeah. yeah but see i think that's what with the trucking thing that's what you got to do when the times are high you just got to have like a piggy bank on the side you know saved up you know like for me it's very good that i kind of had some real estate on the side literally ended up selling some of it and put putting the money into the trucking you know and i feel like we're, we're kind of growing we're, we're trying to grow too so we're literally taking all the money and just dumping it straight into the company I don't, I don't pay myself nothing for the last two years. I think you got to sacrifice so much things. And that's, that's another thing I wanted to ask you, like, how much did you actually have to sacrifice to get to where you are now? Like, was it like for years? Are you still doing that? How much of a life balance do you have and business balance do you have? You know, like your personal stuff or are you so still it's, like, it's like this, um, Bob, I, um, just so, so you understand how devoted I was, I, for the first five years, I did not allow myself. For the first three years, I did not allow myself to go on the vacation. And for the final two years, I let my wife go, but I didn't go out of principle. Wow. Yeah. It was it was just dedication. It was just uh, I hate using that word. I call it demonic demonic motivation, but it just it sounds so wrong. But it was just like obsessed motivation. Like yeah, I I, I have to break this code. I need to figure this out. And my biggest thing was uh, it wasn't necessarily make money. I was more focused was on just, build, building a company, building a, building a, uh, building, you know, like I have a, I call it building a franchise where yeah, in or not, it's gonna, it's gonna work. It's just, I'm very big on like SOPs and stuff, you know, like just yeah. really creating a company, building a team, building sure. yeah. you know, ways of, of doing business and stuff, you know, and right now, right now, like I am, um, through this process of, of, um, of no freight is actually my perfect time because this is if you if you look at Migway's past 10 years this is the third time where Migway makes the biggest leap like we made our biggest leap from 2013 to 2014 you know so no money no money boom we made a bunch of money then 2015 2016 everything i made in 2014 i invested about this building i built the parking lot I hired people, I started building a team and everything else. Then we went from, I think we went five years ago, we were at 30 trucks and today we are at 260 trucks, you know? So oh, we wow. went, yeah. boom, hyper move. Yeah. Now I believe that this is a time for us to, um, this is a time for us to uh, not, not grow in truck wise, but really uh, set us up, you know, like our goal is to get to a thousand trucks, right? That just, this is something we always talk about, you know? So now it's like, all right, what does it th what does a thousand truck company look like? So I go back to my Excel sheet and I start plugging in thousand trucks, you know, two thousand trailers. How many dispatchers I need? How many? What does it look like? How many of these people need to be in Ukraine? How many need to be in America? And I start running those scenarios. Then I put a goal, and the goal is to get there by twenty twenty nine. Then I back it down to, you know, what does that look like? And I actually wrote it down. Like, okay, here's how we're gonna get there. How we're we gonna do that? And and then 
you start focusing on building your team. Like during COVID, for example, during COVID, like typical Slavic thing, you have one dispatcher, you have 10 trucks. That's like a formula, one yeah. to 10. We don't have that. We have, I have essentially four people running the whole company, four main dispatchers. Oh, wow. And how we did that is completely coming up with a new way of dispatching where I have, I have people that book loads. That's all they do. And they only book loads out of their 100 mile radius. Like we have a Northeast team, Southeast and Midwest. And the oh, wow. beautiful thing that the Midwest team is one guy that heads and he's got people under him. He knows every broker, every customer. He knows who closes <laughs> and opens when. And he knows that market better than you because you have to focus on the whole country. Of course. He's focusing yeah. on just two, three states. And if the yeah. truck shows up in his area, his job is to cover it the best way possible. He doesn't care which way it goes. Either it goes southeast or it goes northeast. It makes no difference to him. And then when the truck gets there, that team picks up that truck. And they're just balancing these trucks around in this triangle. But how does that work, though? Like, so your drivers, how do you deal with the driver, like, home time? Do they figure – who figures out when do they go? That's a separate or is there, like – That's a separate, a separate team. team that does, like, that's tracking and tracing team, yeah. and, like, okay. Yeah, so we had okay. we had we you know we have a decent presence in Ukraine, and then we um, we're in Ukraine. I will privately tell you guys there, there's a city there's a city and a state in America that is it's the same cost to have people work for you as it is in Ukraine nowadays. Kentucky, <laughs> is it? And uh, and uh, I'm not. I'm I not probably got comment. it right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna comment. Somebody, but, uh, somebody literally mentioned Kentucky I'll, to me. So I'll, I'll tell you. I just don't. Want, I don't want public to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Know you know, could be Alabama. I got family in Alabama. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We can cut this part out. Okay, so you're saying that uh, this part of the U.S. has the same cost of an employee as in Ukraine? So it's like this: um, we are able to hire people there, give them a little bit more workload. Yeah, uh, and it, per truck, it costs me the same. And I get my so I, service. I 100 percent agree with this. So this is the thing. Back then in Ukraine, you could me. So we had this discussion before because I thought about maybe hiring people from Ukraine too. But literally, it became so expensive to hire people out of Ukraine. It it was literally the same thing as hiring people here. It, like I remember, even when I flew to Ukraine before the war started, the dispatchers were making what the dispatchers were making here. It like does didn't make any sense. So uh, when I was a freight broker in in Ukraine, we had a team of 100 people, and some of the like the managers were making like between three and even upwards to five K a month. Yeah. Um, so yeah. they were, they were crushing it. And I mean, and now obviously it's a bit different. They moved, Everest moved their office to, to crack however, ever since the war happened. Uh, so it's been a little bit different, unfortunately, but yeah. So like, I mean, there's like, yeah, I, I see, I see your point, uh, David, but where, where's your yeah, office but I, located? I'm just curious. Sorry. In Ukraine. Where's your office located in Ukraine? Well, I had, well, we actually had multiple, we had one in Kiev, one in Lviv and one in South America and one in Poland. Oh yeah, we're in Poland. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. People in Ukraine found it because people from okay. Ukraine were running for war, so we had to open one in Poland. Got it. Got yeah, it. I live, you, guys, I live in you, Poland. you guys use Zell, right, for it or to open it up? No, no, like no, no. It was our own. I started out with Zell. I have three. Okay. My first three dispatches yeah. were with Zell, but um, we quickly realized that it was, that was too expensive. You know, and uh, I had I had I rented spaces yeah. in Kiev, right in the center of uh, of Kiev. Then I had one in view. Well, I still have one in mm -hmm. view. I just put everything in a storage in Kiev because of the war. Uh, we have yeah. one in one of the Kiev's right now. We kind of shifted some uh, office over there. Oh, wow. Uh, and then we closed our South America office because that was similar situation as Zell, just through another company. Uh -huh. uh, and then we have some people working from like Poland, Bulgaria, just one-offs, just in, you know individually, they're working from homes where they're, where they're at. And yeah. a lot of it has been going to the place in America that I was talking about. Okay. And how many employees do you have right now? I don't know. It's, like, uh, without drivers? Without the drivers, just like employees that are yeah, without, uh, dispatching. I want to say 70. Okay. Something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. That's mechanics, dispatchers, you know, counting everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big operation. I mean, for my for me, from that that seems huge. I don't know how you I don't know how you guys do it or like how I feel like there's got to be a such team, a lot. Like, it's, it's a team. Yeah. I can't do anything by myself. It's a team. No, I know, but it's a team. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, but that's that's, that's 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 kind of that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, and then at the end of the day, 
um, people only work as hard as you're willing to work. So if you show them that you're not, you know, you know, you know, Slavs, Slavs like to kind of flex their, you know, whatever, yeah, you know, buying cars and things like that. And it's okay to yeah. buy cars if your ratio is like one to a hundred, you know, but you know, our Slavs that make money and yeah, of course, all the so gets, driving on a G wagon <laughs> gets, gets pulled out and you buy a G wagon and stuff, you know, um. Uh, yeah, that's another thing I want to like kind of give you credit because I feel like the way even you run your Instagram page is pretty like dope. You know, you kind of like just don't really. I like it. It's not like a Slavic. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I know exactly what you mean. But it's it's, it's yeah, dope. Yeah. I really like it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I don't post a lot. And I need. I actually hired a summer manager that will start posting it for me because I just don't have time for it. But um, yeah. Uh, it's 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 again, Bob. For you, like when I started for the longest time, I lived on only ten percent of what I made. Yeah. Until you started making more money than 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 ten percent was that was too much so you you lowered it but I never yeah. I never went above the ten percent you know so I mean right now I don't even pay myself from from trucking oh yeah, just yeah, zero. yeah. right now it's different I'm talking about I'm talking yeah. about you know when you start making money let's say you have ten trucks whatever let one yeah. truck be where you pay yourself and everything else is back in the company yeah. and then let your yeah. motivation be you know let's say if you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year we'll make sure a company makes a million. So you yeah. can make that a hundred. I mean, if, if you can't do that, then don't pay yourself. That was my motivation. That's that's how I made the first step. And then it gets yeah. to the point where it's like, you know, you just now you're doing it because because it's working and people love it and it's you're you're obligated to do it. How much yeah, are you making for right sure. now? I'm sorry. <laughs> how, how much are you making, making right now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for the record, I, I we haven't lost money yet. So thank God. Okay. Regardless, oh, okay. yeah, regardless of what's been happening, uh there has been some weeks that I saw some uh uh, some uh, close calls, not not close calls. Uh, you know, when you see in parentheses, you know that that's a loss. <laughs> on the balance, <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, but uh, yeah, but at the end of the month, the good weeks would offset the losses, and 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 we uh, did not lose any money. So uh, we haven't lost money yet, but um, we yeah we. So we what what motivate what motivates you? Like, if it's not is it just is it just like the business life? Like, because for me, like for example, for me, when I go home, right, and I have nothing going on, I feel like I get bored out of my mind. I cannot sit there at all. Like for me, it's literally. I feel like back then it was more about like the money, this and that, you know. But now it's just like I always need to do something, and I always yeah. get myself involved in more and more things, you know. And that's what I've noticed. Is it kind of the same for you, or are you just now like? I mean, Bob, I don't know how much you know about what I do personally, but I have a lot going on. Like I am yeah, no, I'm I doing this it. thing where I'm hiking seven highest volcanoes in the world. You know, oh, um, wow. I'm, I already did three of them. I failed my fourth one because I got lung edema where your lungs start to fill up with water and you can't breathe. So I had to be, had to be taken to the hospital from the mount, you know. That's, that's fascinating though so you built like a trucking empire uh over there in north carolina mm, no 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 it's far from an empire it's we are just starting to nibble at uh the idea of of of, act, of legitimate growth um i know people mm. think i know it seems like i know it seems like all oh, 260 trucks is a big company it's not because yeah, i feel like some of our slavic people would be like okay i'm out i'm retiring at this point i don't know nothing sure. else but you still want to grow huh you still want to is one day yeah. to be public or is it uh no the, the, the idea is to um so cut this out again i was off oh, my goodness my, uh, in 2021 i had an offer <laughs> bucks for my company wow yeah. And you said no. Wow. I said no because I believe I can get it to a billion and then I'll sell it. That's the goal. Okay. I don't know. Probably should have sold it because now you could have gotten it for a hundred million. <laughs> you could have bought wow. it back for a hundred million. Wow. There's, you know, you know, you know, you know, when, you know, when the waves come in, they go and then there's another one coming in. There's going to be another well, wave. You heard, you heard that, uh, right? I think he sold his company. And now I feel like that was the smartest decision ever because I feel like now he, he could buy it for a portion back, you know? Uh, no. I don't know. I don't know if the. He's got a bracelet on his ankle. He had to sell it. You know? Yeah, but like I feel like, well, cut, we got to cut this out for yeah. sure too. We're not, yeah. we're not posting but wait, that. But yeah. in terms of the Ferraris, was that like a business expense? I'm, I'm curious. Like, or is that just a personal expense? Okay, so I'll, I'll be frank. The reason you're doing all these things is because, um, believe it or not, in the long run, you have to, everything pays for itself, and you get to write it off. So okay, why so about it was so, a write off? Uh, no, no, no. So not the, not the, not the Ferraris. Uh, I, I did buy two Bentleys that I wrote off because they were over 6,000 pounds. That was just a straight write-off. Um, but uh, wow. the Ferraris, I did it because uh, it's almost like a way to scale up in the Ferrari world and the corporate world 
where you become a VIP customer. And then what happens then is like, for example, there's only two people in Charlotte, North Carolina that got an allocation for pure Sangway. You know what I'm talking about, the Ferrari, the SUV Ferrari, the V12, naturally aspirated. You can look We're it up. We're not there yet, but yeah, okay. Yeah, Ferrari came out with a car. It's called Pure Sangue, which is the purest Ferrari of its kind. That's what they call it. And it's mm -hmm. V, V12, naturally aspirated, and uh, it was a very hard car to get. Well, there's only two people in Charlotte that got on the one of them. To give you an idea, oh, well, wow. not, not if I sell that car, it will pretty much pay for three out of those Ferraris just with a profit if I wanted to sell. You know what I mean? So, like, when you get into this world, then I'll be able It's to all buy. business, yeah. It's all yeah. business, yeah. And then the Ferrari itself, it has Migway... Migway on a door, well, that's a marketing expense. Boom. That's so you know when you're making money, you need those expenses and stuff. You know, so yeah, it's it's you play you play the game both ways. Um, that that was and plus you have fun. I mean, plus you know I get to stay around the house and and do something. You know, because I got to do something. I'm just like you. I can't sit still. Yeah, so, I'm the yeah. same way. Mm -hmm. so, that's awesome. Yeah, that's fascinating. sorry guys. I feel like we're talking about me the whole time. Well, that's the whole point. No, uh, not well. That, that's why <laughs> we're know, having you on. The I, just, I just feel, I yeah. just, it feels weird. I don't want to feel like I'm bragging or flexing. No, or no, totally. This is fascinating. That, you know, for like, me, it's fascinating. I'm Bob, Bob uh, was saying, yeah, that for me, like, you're like a role model to him. So, yeah, like my idea yeah. with Instagram, my idea with Instagram is to inspire people legitimately. You know, like you know, yeah. what's this guy, Anthony or Tony? What's the guy that was with all the girls all the time? Tony? Oh, uh, no, it's no, no, uh, um, Dan Bilzerian. Dan no, Bilzerian. the other guy. He's very popular. Oh. Right now. Kickbox Tony, not Tony. Oh, Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate. Yeah. Andrew Tate. So, like, my idea is, is he's all promoting girls and sex and all this other stuff. I want to promote uh, morals, family, business, and and things yeah. like that. You know what I mean? But and see, then, yeah, no, and I agree with that. That's actually really dope. But some people, it depends on people's mindset. Some people will look at it and be like, oh, you know, and then others will actually get motivated. Like for me, I feel like, dude, that's actually dope. That's actually motivating, you know, for me. So maybe. maybe. I, yeah, I think it depends on the on the people, but I think definitely to the right people is definitely motivation. Yeah, I just, you know? I, just so. I just want it, like for like Slavic people look up to me. I just want to be like guys, like fast cars and all this stuff. That's crap. You know, focus on your business, be calm, be morally yeah. correct. You know, go to church or whatever it is that you know keeps you keeps you grounded, and then let everything else come to you. You know, like you know, yeah, you know, respect your wife, love your wife, love your family. Like you know, like the things that I do, things that are important to me. You know, and I'm yeah. hoping that. You know, people will, instead of just chasing, you know, who knows what, because like today someone texted me, David, teach me how you do this. And my question to him was, what is your motive to learn? And he yeah. answered it right. He's like, my motive to learn so I can make enough money to do what's important to me. I'm like, what's important to you? And he says something to do in church. I was like, if that is your motive, I'm willing to share with you. But if your motive is to get rich, it's not worth the money. Like, yeah. And yeah. And a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people get into it and they think, well, they see all this and they think it's so easy, but like, to circle back there's so much that i feel like that needs to be sacrificed in order just to even you know do like just to level even up or to be a little bit you know further ahead i think people really don't realize how much sleepless nights you have and how much stress oh you God. have to deal with you know it's like it's insane especially in the trucking industry i don't know i feel like in real estate industry it's not as bad because i was in if i mean i still am just a little bit but i feel like it's not as like because I feel like trucking, any problem is like your problem. You know, any anything that happens, you have to deal with it, like in the middle of the night. You know, I don't know. I mean, for you, you might be, it's like the company might be a little bit no, bigger. Bob, but, I mean, at the beginning, at the beginning I, used to, I used to make fun of myself that I knew every towing company and a, and a repair shop <laughs> between North Carolina and New Jersey. You know, like yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that was the case. But one thing I just left out, like one of the. You know, I know I made, made it sound like I'm a genius here, but like this, this really helped me is uh there was a time where i started buying gliders and uh -huh. i went really really heavy into buying gliders and yeah i, think, I remember that and we currently own the final 10 gliders ever made the final oh, 10 wow. consecutive VIN numbers you know our, our 10 trucks came off and the, and the glider factory shut down well there was a time where uh the whole eld situation we were all exempt from from for a couple of years and that yeah. helped us a lot because we we're able to yeah. you know Make yeah money and 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 and, and do so. is the glider still worth it right now or you um like i mean we, is st it we still, still have we still have them but we run them like the rest of the trucks now what's a glider okay. by the way glider is, glider is, a, is a brand new truck with a non-emission engine in it so you don't have to worry with all the emissions and stuff okay yeah so, and the good part about it is the eld you don't have to like kind of worry about that you could run paper logs if you wanted to it gives more space to the drivers where the driver can kind of we don't run paper we just ran the bootlegged version of keep trucking 
that wasn't you know yeah it's yeah still yeah. electronic but it was a loose leaf essentially yeah so like, that's what we did yeah what do you do now to like um make sure that you're on top of like the regulations and compliant in the industry of dot uh, again um it like in the past year we have we have i want to say seven people so what we did we took we took uh 260 trucks divided by seven and that's how many trucks are allocated to each guy and that guy has his fleet where he watches their logbooks he calls the drivers hey you're this always constantly 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 on yeah. top of it you know and, and that's how we do it i mean yeah. we're all eld right now so that doesn't matter anymore yeah. but still you have to stay on top sure. of it make sure they don't use too much pc and all that crap sure. that's yeah. a constant battle between you know, dispatchers and safety but they make it work yeah there's a lot that goes into it that i feel like a lot of people that are outside the trucking don't really understand it you know with the eld like, with the dispatch yeah. and the hours it's it's insane even like road so conditions or something yeah yeah great brokers are yeah we gotta assholes. educate you paul we gotta educate you and this is what we made this <laughs> i'm not a broker for. anymore but yeah but we can educate, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. We'll educate the broker the broker community for sure yeah. they need to know yeah we, we actually we started a brokerage in 2022 um oh, awesome yeah, it's called Megway Logistics. Small, but it's 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 going. Oh, nice! You guys yeah. should uh Gotta set up a shipperCRM.com when when we come out with the application. You get okay. new shippers. So, what does ShipperCRM do, uh, do? Like, what what's the idea behind so, it? ShipperCRM. Do you know what a CRM is? Um, like I'm CSO. I mean I'm building my own right now, so yeah. You're building your own CRM. Oh crap! Yeah. Okay, I don't okay. explain it to me because I so, really don't know what it CRM is. CRM is a customer relationship management. Uh, that's what it means customer relationship okay. management and essentially like have you heard of hubspot uh about hubspot or uh salesforce these are basically tools designed. salesforce yeah i heard it okay. yeah, yeah these are tools designed for you to like put in like potential leads like let's say you want to you want to work with walmart be like okay like i'm gonna put walmart in here i'm gonna track my relationship with them I'm trying to see like okay i contacted david from from walmart and he so he told me that to contact him back in a few months because he's not setting up any carriers right now or something like that. You put it in the system and you do that for if you're a customer sales rep, if you're freight, working for a freight broker and you're looking to get shippers, you're essentially reaching out to hundreds of these companies every month. And, you know, the ones that reach back out to you, you want to, you know, put that information in the system so it's all stored. Because like, let's say David emails you back saying like to reach back out April 1st. You want to put that in your system, like reach out to David April 1st. And this goes, you know, when you're reaching out to hundreds of companies. That's a relationship management tool. And then on top of it, what Shipper CRM does is like, we also give you contact information. So like, let's say you're like, shit, I want, I really want to work with Safeway from Charlotte because I'm always there and I have a few trucks that deliver there. I want to get the contact information for the logistics management person. So it's like, you type in like Safeway Charlotte and like request contact information for like the logistics management person. And then we give you that, that contact information and then you can store that in the CRM and start that relationship uh, with them. And then on top of that, we're going to have an educational portal where it's literally just going to be podcasts and interviews with like shippers and like, like what do shippers want from a broker or a trucking company? How do you set up with them and kind of educate people uh, to, to start working directly with shippers instead of, you know, either going through brokers or for brokers to set up with shippers. Oh, cool. It's, I mean, it, it's a way to streamline your workflow. Exactly. Yeah. And stay organized. Yeah. It's just stay organized. Yeah, most of our Slavic people won't need that or understand that. Yeah, with the Slavic companies. But yeah, but don't don't cut this out. I want everybody to stay alert when we release our product. You know, like follow us on Megway. You know, because I think it's going to be a game changer. What I are you coming out with, uh, David? Huh? What are you coming out with? Uh, it's like a TMS software, but okay. it's just it's more than just your typical tms softwares that you see today like this this thing has a brain like it can give you suggestions you know like um it's linked to our phone system. so if bob calls me you will automatically recognize that hey this is a bob calling he's probably calling about this load because system knows which load you booked with with who you know so just just you know oh well yeah it, it should it you know it should it should be mind-blowing when when the public sees it because uh i am kind of planning maybe next year this year we're going to keep in a company really test it not just test it but like really kind of work all the bugs out of it you know do all the features and maybe next year yeah release and i think that's going to be a separate business that might might very well out, outgrow make way by revenue and and and, and everything yeah. you know but um i'm excited that's cool. we're excited about that we, we've been doing it for two and a half years now well well i'm excited to learn more definitely let us know once it's released 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I will. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're cool. gonna do marketing analysts. Like, there's no tomorrow. <laughs> oh, nice, cool. You could you could sponsor the podcast. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Like, hey, maybe you guys can, because uh, you not only that, but um, Paul has a lot of like newsletters and he does a mm-hmm. uh, website where you guys. Yeah, Paul, what website. I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna actually forward you, uh, if, if Bob, if you can give me his contact, Bob, Paul, if you can give me your contact, I'll give I'll give your sure. contact to Tanya, uh, okay. marketing and um and and we'll we'll yeah. do something. Awesome. Okay. That's Sounds exciting. Good, yeah. I gotta go visit you guys in Charlotte. I'll come. Yeah. I'll come out with yeah, a videographer. Gotta... We'll like film like a whole like Charlotte kind of like trucking scene. Yeah. Exactly. We can line our trucks up, midway trucks. Up. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but yeah, real. okay. For real. Sure. No, but it would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm definitely gonna plan out. I'm gonna be in Orlando for the TIA conference. It's a freight broker conference uh, in April. Maybe I'll mm-hmm. I'll like plan it out so I'm I'm there in Charlotte like before or after. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. David, is there anything else that you want to talk about or uh, discuss or ask us any no, questions? Mean, or no, I mean, I think I think I said a bit too much. So make sure you guys cut everything out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'll be great. I honestly think it'll be great. I think uh, there's oh. a different perspective because maybe for you, Paul, it's a little bit different. But for us, I think we come from like you know the Slavic trucking community because there's a big Slavic trucking community. You know, so I think right. it'll be cool to to hear different sides. And I think honestly, like the younger generation. I think thinks a lot differently than the older generation, but you know what? I think the older generation won't even watch this video. So that's, that's another thing, you know, that, that. So that's actually interesting that you say that, uh, you know, log rock, I was, I've been emailing you about log rock. So yeah. On her. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I saw him today at the conference this year and he was telling me like how they realized statistically that anyone that's under 40 years old, when they reach out to them is four times more likely to use their software than anyone over yeah. 40. Literally, that's yeah. what he realized. He was like, he was like, if you could tell me the owner of the trucking company, the age of the tr- of the owner of the trucking company, I'll tell like I'll I'll buy that info because I'm just gonna ignore everyone that's over forty. And then <laughs> yeah, not waste your time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So not waste your time. Yeah. and that's that's honestly fascinating because like they're I more believe open technology, I believe they're that. more open. Yeah, they're and, more and Bob, open. I have an idea for you since you kind of have the platform for this is to actually unite slots together instead of. Um, instead of competing uh there was yeah. some there was something that we used to do in 2014 i remember i, I teamed up with a bunch of bulgarians we mm-hmm. had a skype this was skype days we had a skype chat where we would not post our trucks till like lunch and then oh it would you know, trigger the system tripping <laughs> the system yeah so we really wow. we really you know, or what we would do, we would post like a like a hundred trucks out of Charlotte, hundred trucks out of Greensboro, hundred trucks out of Char- out of whatever. And then lunchtime, uh, take all those postings down. And brokers that didn't really pay attention, they were fake postings. Would end up paying us whatever we would charge. I mean, so I'm not talking. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not asking to you know rig the system, but I'm talking about like it would That's make fun. sense for us to unite. And I'm actually working on through this software. I'm working on a thing where the software is actually. Would. Not, I'm sorry. It would. I think the younger people would do that, but I feel like there's a lot of people that'd be like, they they wouldn't even care. You know, they're just like, I feel like I love our people and I love our like a slide, but there's there's always something that's like nah. It's like trying to you know the, there's a saying where you can't two truck drivers can't agree on a free cup of coffee. That I feel like that's the same thing with our people. You know that everybody has their own opinion and they're like nah, you're doing it wrong. This is the way to do it. You're doing it wrong. This is the way to do it. You know, it's like well, so I, I believe in the millennials. The millennials have a mindset that would be more open to it, you know. So I agree. I agree. Yeah. There's uh there's there there's something there. And I, I really feel like that there's a way to get united. There's a way where we can combine our truck orders and get bigger discounts, combine our fuel accounts, get bigger. I mean, there's so many ways of doing this. And I'm hoping with the software, I have like we it's not written out yet, but we kind of uh, coded the foundation for that. Is mm-hmm. in the future whenever I'm done with it, that's the second part of it. Is I'm hoping I can create like a conglomerate essentially, you know, where, you know, instead of me buying a hundred trucks here, I can order a thousand trucks here and I can go directly to corporate and I'd be like, Hey, I'm ordering a thousand trucks. And I can negotiate like the big carriers doing stuff, you know? And then, so then they just give it to all the, Slav- like sell it to all the Slavic people. Because like, people already keep friends, calling me, David, you know? can yeah. I buy trucks on there? You can I buy trucks I mean, on I there? Hit you, how many times did I hit you up hey, already? This yeah, year, you, you too. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, so. That would, I think that would be something that um, maybe, you know, in the next couple of years, something that, you know, we can start yeah. promoting and be working on. Cool, all right. cool. All right, boys. Pleasure talking to you, Paul. Awesome. Before you Great go, I just had one last question. You read books, right? What's the three read. best books that you would recommend for business? Uh, well, besides the Bible, question. because I know uh, we both read the yeah, Bible. Yeah. You know, so, but... uh, Good to Great 
is what changed my mind. Good to great. Uh, good to great by Jim Collins, I believe. Uh, don't quote me. I know it's good to great. Okay. Uh, compound effect. Come, I have that one. Okay. What's the third one? It doesn't have to be business. Anything if you like. The the power of positive thinking. It's a twisted book, but if you can if you can handle it, it's a good it's a good read. Power. The power uh, of positive thinking. I'm about to order all three of those books. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was great. Thanks for coming on. I think this was a great podcast. We should probably do another yeah. one, schedule for later on or yeah. something, and go from there. Totally. Yeah. Uh, when I come visit you guys in Charlotte, we could do like an actual sit down podcast. Like, you can do my conference room. Yeah. 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 So that would actually be pretty cool. Yeah, I'll plan that for April. Okay. Yeah, just let so, me know. Awesome. Keep it posted. Again, Paul, reach out to me and I'll we'll connect with you. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for the hookup. All right. Yep. Okay. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Free Caviar podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast or if you didn't, leave a review. Let me know what you think. I appreciate any feedback. If you'd like to have more Freight Caviar content, go to freightcaviar.com and subscribe to my email newsletter.